This is the rotoscope tutorial. Rotoscoping was invented by Max and Dave Flesher in 1917, and it is a method of tracing live action film or video to an animation cells. Seems like a very simple idea, but they were the first ones to think of it they were the first ones to invent a way to do it. So open an Action Script 3.0 document. Now for this one, we are going to import a video and we need to set the frame rate for 15 frames per second because that is the frame rate of the video itself. I'm going to save this file as your last name, first initial, and roto. Make sure that your stage fits in the window. Select the keyframe on layer 1 with your selection tool. Now, with this keyframe selected in the timeline, we want to go to File, Import, and Import Video. The Import Video dialog box opens up, and this is where we have to tell it how we want to import it. So. We want to say, where is the video file? We want to embed this FLV in the in SWF and play in timeline, okay? And then browse. This is so we can find the video. Now, you should have the video on your desktop. Greyhound video is the one we're going to be using. Open now. We want to, next, how would we like to embed the video? Symbol type embedded video, place the instance on the stage, expand the timeline if needed, and turn off include audio. We do not want audio. Next, the video you're using is located at, and it should tell you that it's on your desktop. The video will be placed on the stage. The timeline will be expanded to accommodate the playback, playback length. Select Finish. And here is the video. And you can play it. And it's just this running greyhound. OK, so now we're going to Command S to save that. Now we want to make sure that the video fits on the stage and if you go ahead and if you go ahead and turn off the eyeball you can see the edges of the stage you see the greyhound is going off the edges of the stage so we want to move it up a little bit try to get the feet on. There we go. My feet fit on now. So once you have that done, now we can say lock the layer. And we want to right click properties. We want to make it a guide layer. Okay. Now we want to add a new layer on top of that layer. This is the layer you're going to be drawing on. Select your brush tool. And in the properties, you want to select a color. And I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to reset 
the this, this is the default settings and I'm going to flip it. So now my fill color is black but I don't want black for my fill color so let's go ahead and select a nice color that will show against that background color and I found that purple works really well because this is sort of a sepia tone which is sort of an orange. Let's get a slightly smaller brush size so that looks yeah, that's pretty good and smoothing a 50. Let's go ahead and close that down. Okay now what you're going to do is you're going to go to each frame and you're going to add a frame for each frame. It's going to be a blank keyframe so you'll press F7 to add a keyframe but first before you do that you're going to select first keyframe and we're going to trace the dog. Now I found the best thing works for me is to sort of indicate where the joints and the major parts of the body are and then connect them with some sort of outlines here because that way I get a, this general sense of motion at the same time I get a general sense of the mass of the body so it's sort of a gestural thing. It doesn't have to be very accurate as long as it's got the general sense of the motion. What we're looking for is gesture. We're not looking for detail. And I'm going to command S and F7. So this is one of Edward Moiberg's early motion studies. Before the invention of film and the invention of movies, there was a man who was having a discussion, let's say, a disagreement with some friends. He was a very rich guy and he was saying that the legs of a horse were not all off the ground at the same time. Well, actually, I think he said they were off the ground at the same time and somebody else said that they weren't. So they were, there was this bet, they had a bet on. And Moybridge was a photographer and he figured out a way to set up trip lines. And so the first actual movie ever made wasn't really a movie, it was a series of sequential photographs that the animal ran through, the, the horse ran through this series of trip lines that had been set up along a racetrack and you could see at each location, which were all evenly spaced, how the legs were situated and at, at some point in the stride they were all off the ground. So this proved the point and the guy won his bet. Then Edward Moybridge went on and found all these different animals to do it with and he also started doing it with people where he would have several cameras set up and would set them off with some kind of a remote way of setting them off and uh, this was the original sequential photographs that somebody figured out oh you can play them at a speed that's similar to the speed at which they were taken and you could see motion and that was the original movies so the speed of the motion however is pretty much set by the animal so how fast the trip lines were tripped depended on how fast the dog was running. So he didn't set the frame rate. The dog set the frame rate. The dog was running with a specific speed and the trip lines were set up a certain distance apart and that translated into 15 frames per second. So there you go. Which is why in addition to it being 15 frames per second, we don't even have a whole second of motion because the dog's stride actually only took 11 frames, so less than a second, 11 frames for one complete cycle. So there are 11, 11 frames here, and that means it's less than a second. <laughs> and there you go. Interesting. So he invented movies, but he wasn't even setting out to invent movies. 
And he he doesn't get credit for inventing movies, but he made the first motion picture accidentally. Movies are generally accepted to have been invented by either Thomas Edison or some guy in Europe whose name I don't know. <laughs> In the Lumiere Brothers. Invented. Projected films. So this takes such a long time really for such very sketchy drawings. Imagine how long it would take for someone to draw something like Bambi or Snow White. Those movies were made by thousands of people who painted every single frame meticulously by hand. This is why we now have computers doing it because it's not a very effective use of time. efficient. It's effective, it's just not efficient. And there will always be somebody somewhere who's making a hand-painted film because it's so beautiful. Okay, that's all loving. Turn on that and let's go back to the beginning and play it. Very nice. Command save. And now if we go to control, test movie, and animate, you see that since that was a guide layer layer, since that was a guide layer, you don't see the video. You just see the actual drawn animation. And even though I did very simple, very, very loose sketches, just getting that gestural quality, it gives you a real sense of liveliness that looks like an alive dog, which is amazing to me. But that's the wonder of rotoscoping. And there you go.